Hey, it's Clint Garrett, Ace Networker, and why do we have virtualization? You're going to hear a lot about virtualization in computer networking, and you're going to get into understanding virtualization when you take your Network Plus exam. So what is virtualization and why do we need it? Network virtualization explained, coming up. Okay, so network virtualization explained. Why do we need to virtualize network operations or protocols or anything when it comes to computer networking or IT in general? That's always the question when you're first starting out. Why do we have virtualization? We have virtual LANs, local area networks, VLANs. We have hypervisors. We have virtual servers. We have virtual terminals. We have all kinds of things that are virtual and we need to understand first of all why do we need virtualization what is the purpose of it and what does it help us do exactly when we hear about virtualization in computer networking what exactly are we talking about well in simple terms when you virtualize something you're moving away from having a hardware component for each thing or process you need on your network to having it virtualized using software in computer networking virtualization you're using software in a special class of programs called hypervisors and virtual machine managers to create an environment where an operating system can perform as if it's installed on its own computer. Now when we're talking about virtual LANs, VLANs, and I'd invite you to check out this video if you get the chance about VLANs, those are usually configured into different layer 2 switches inside each switches configuration. But with other virtualization, you're dealing with software systems that perform like previous hardware or independent systems did. So to clear all of that up. Let's start with looking at what normal operating systems function like, then go from there. In a normal operating system like Windows, you have a portion of the programming in the operating system that handles all the low-level interactions between software and the hardware components. This portion in a normal operating system is known as the supervisor. The supervisor handles things like allotting time and resources and task scheduling, etc. When it comes to virtualization, you can run multiple operating systems simultaneously on one machine called a host. Now, this does require more sophisticated programming to allow handling of much more complex interactions going on on a system like this. This is where terms like hypervisor and virtual machine manager or VMM come into play. A hypervisor, much like a supervisor on a normal operating system running on a single machine, a hypervisor handles every single input and output that the operating system or systems request of all the hardware components. VMware Workstation is a well-known example of a hypervisor. It's, in fact, it's more often used than, than any other. It allows you to do things like add or remove virtual hard drives, virtual RAM, virtual network cards and so on. You also get to use things in virtualization like virtualized BIOS and system setup utility for every virtual machine you have. So with that basic definition of network virtualization explained, let's get right to the point. Why do we need virtualization? Let's start with some basics about virtualization to help clarify why we use it. For one, a single hypervisor on a single system will run as many virtual machines as its RAM memory, its CPU, and its drive space will allow. And more often than not, the biggest limiting factor on this is the RAM memory that you have available. Secondly, a virtual machine that shuts down or stops working is just a file. It's, or a group of files on a hard drive, and it's not an actual machine that needs to be recovered. You'll also get other benefits from virtualization that you didn't have with the classic methods of operating systems on single hosts. A whole lot less power and electricity is needed and used in virtualization. You're also consolidating hardware, so you have much less in the way of hardware components and space needed to run those hardware components. And system recovery is so much easier when using virtual environments. Therefore, uptime is a big factor. Less downtime equals more uptime and reliability. You can easily duplicate systems or recover systems from backup when using virtualization. And you can more easily research logs and historical data in virtualization as opposed to an older individual system or systems. So there are multiple, multiple benefits that are gained from the use of virtualization. I'll get into more detail as we get into the series on network virtualization explained shortly. But for now, just understand the basics of virtualization and why it's better and why it's needed 
in a modern networking environment. If you're preparing for the Network Plus exam, you'll probably encounter some questions about virtualization, and you'll need to understand how it works and why it's needed and used. 